Hello, everyone. Yeah, uh, this is Xinya Wang from University of Sydney. I'm currently working in the UBTech AI Center in our university. So if you have any interest regarding to the today's topic or have interest in our research group, welcome to contact me. Uh, so today I want to introduce, give an introduction to the machine learning. Uh, so before this, uh, I want to first introduce three terms, basically artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. Someone will say, so what's the difference between these three terms, right? So actually, artificial intelligence is a little bit broad. So actually, from the definition, uh, AI is a concept that's more than a single technique. It's covered a lot. Cover lots of techniques such as natural language processing, speech recognition, and of course, computer vision. And uh, actually, from 1950, from this flow, you can say that artificial intelligence becomes very popular. And uh, after that, in 1980s, machine learning becomes popular than artificial intelligence. So actually, machine learning is just a subfield of artificial intelligence. It tried to emphasize on creating the algorithm that can learn from the data without human intervention. So it's just like artificial intelligence. Machine learning also encompasses other fields such as static, physics, computer science. Yeah, so like let's go back to the 90, 2010. So in recent years, deep learning um, becomes more and more popular. Um, so in other words, deep learning is also a subset of machine learning tools. It's used the deep neural network and uh, is a subset of machine learning tools and technique. Uh, deep learning is characterized by the large neural network and it is a train a massive amount of data. So today, our focus is just to give a brief introduction of machine learning, right? So I will try to properly link machine learning and the recent deep learning technique. Okay, so here is some big player, big companies. That's it's very got advanced technique and the machine learning, like Facebook, Amazon, Google, Microsoft. Uh, still, there are many startup company working in this field. Uh, like it works on the low end contract. Uh, was on the customer service and also business, including business intelligence, investing, sales, and the personal assistance. Uh, importantly, there are some few that got very success. The machine learning algorithm got very success in medical and image analyze. Uh, so someone says that like uh, in 2090, 25% of the job tasks will be ultimate. Right, and uh, also they evaluate that many experts believe that like by 2050, machine will have reached the human level intelligence. So that's the reason why we need to chase this AI wave, right? So let's go to the next slides. So back to today's topic is uh, because it's focused on the machine learning. So today, I want to introduce mainly three subjects of machine, different type of machine learning technique. Um, so first, I want to introduce the, what's the definition, exact definition of machine learning. So from Wikipedia, actually, machine learning is a field that um, artificial intelligence can use the static technique to give computer system to, to the ability to learn. Um, actually, algorithm that can be improved their performance using the training data. So, in other words, uh, machine learning is a method that can method of data analysis and can automate the analyze model building. Right, and uh, here is the uh, timeline for the machine learning wave. Right, so here I maybe just give some uh, main milestone. Like uh, in 1974, the back propagation was introduced. So here the back propagation is the fundamental technique for the deep learning, the DNN structure. 
And after that, in 1998, Lacun introduced the convolutional neural network. It's designed for handwriting recognition. So the initially, the same structures are just work on very simple data set, like handwriting, digit analyze, recognition, right? So at that stage, uh, the handwriting recognition accuracy is just around 70. And uh, currently, it's very easy to get 99% accuracy on this simple data set. So this here, this is uh, the performance scan for the technique for the CNN structure. And another uh, milestone that I need to mention is in 1995, SVM regions was introduced. So the before the deep learning got popular, uh, that means uh, back to 19, uh, 2008, actually SVM and the random forest is the most powerful tool for machine learning technique. So it has already uh, widely used for the companies and also different classification uh, algorithms. And uh, after that, an another thing I need to point out is that in 2012, SNET was win the ImageNet uh, challenge. So ImageNet, probably some of you already know that ImageNet is a very big computer vision data set, it includes uh, 1,000 class uh, with more than, uh, more than 100 million image. Right? So it's very huge data sets. Uh, so before the deep learning, the accuracy on this data set is very poor. But after that, especially the AlexNet, it's got very successful accuracy rate. It's, it's the first time that the machine learning technique beats the human for the 1000 class recognition task. And uh, so here I want to give the main trace structure of machine, different category of machine learning. Uh, generally speaking, machine learning can be broadly classified as surprise, unsurprise, and in reinforcement learning algorithm. Uh, so first I want to point out is the surprise learning algorithm. So normally we start with, uh, we have the input variable S. This is, could be image, could be like uh, some, some data like language input or some audio input, right? And uh, we have the corresponding label Y. That's why it can be recognized, can be like uh, from which class, right? It's a digit six or digit eight. And uh, we try to map the function from the input to the output. That's when we map function from X to Y. So that we can establish a relationship which can be used for the prediction. Uh, there are some common algorithms that lie under this, uh, this branch. So such as linear regression um, in the regression case. And also uh, for the classification problem, like there is, uh, uh, can be used for image classification, this is very obviously, and also can be used for the customer's retention and the identification detection. Uh, so here for the classification task, actually Renault Forest, as I mentioned before, and the uh, sport vector machine is very popular. Also nearest neighbor is a kind of basic uh, machine learning algorithm in this branch. Right, and uh, next one here, let's go into the deeper of, maybe someone may ask what's the difference for the regression classification. So actually regression trying to estimate the parameter. So for example, like the weight and the height, right? Um, so the, for the regression, try to predict uh, the continuous value quantity. Uh, so like uh, you have the input of the sale, market sale data and you want to predict the price of the house uh, in some particular city or some particular area. Right? So this is a regression problem because this price is a continuous variable. And another uh, specific task for the surprise learning is, is most common thing is a classification problem. 
So here I gave a figure to illustrate like the blue point is a positive, positive that just means belong to this class and white point means uh, negative that's not belong to this class. So th this is uh, the line here is a boundary of this, this class estimation. So here for the class estimation, there is some, some simple case like handwriting digit classification, right? So you try to recognize the input image. This is belong to three or belongs to seven, right? And for regression, we can probably get this curve, this line like this. We have the data exact to the data point. And what we do is we try to get a function, get a mapping to predict this line. Right, so that uh, if we have a new input x, that's, that's in the x array, and uh, thus we can retrieve this, and uh, we can estimate what is the y a, right? So this is a classification model. So basically, classification motion model is that we have a lot of training samples, and these training samples we have exactly uh, y, the exactly annotation of what this belong to, what this data belong to, right? And uh, back to the general machine learning, another main branch is unsupervised learning. So actually unsupervised learning, that means we only have the input x, that means we only have the image, but we do not have the training annotations. We do not know this image is belong to one or two or three, right? So we do not have training course. So why we need unsurprised um, learning? It's actually uh, unsurprised learning takes tasks uh, when you have no label data available for training. And uh, it is, uh, why we need this is because the supervision sometimes it's quite extensive and also it takes a lot of time on it, right? Uh, so, for example, for the image net data sets, if just a few person annotate, like, annotate just like one research group annotated, this will be um, takes years to obtain this large annotated data set, right? And uh, and also sometimes this kind of labeling is noise. So for supervised learning, there's some specific specific field is that's how to handle the label noise. Okay, back to the unsupervised learning. There are many uh, tasks in this field, like we can do the clustering, and also we can do the dimension reduction uh, under the unsupervised learning tools. And there are many applications for this, like uh, clustering can be used for the recommender system, and also we can use it for the marketing and also the customer segmentation. And also for the dim um, dimension reduction, that we can use to visualize meaningful data, like use it for big data visualization. If we reduce it to just only two dimension, we can obviously uh, visualize data in, in, in our figure, right? And also the another uh, thing is uh, structured discovery. So sometimes it's just some latent semantic structure. So we try to reduce the dimension and explore the uh, intent, the instrict uh, uh, structure of the semantic. And the, and the other thing is that, um, let, let's go to the, the detail of classroom and the dimension reduction. So here, uh, try to group them into several cluster. Here we try to group each color data sample into the circle, right? So there are many uh, techniques to do the collection, such as the very popular one, the basic one is k-means, and also some like hierarchical class classroom. Uh, folder and uh, if you consider the deep DNN network, that's we can use deep grave nets for the classroom. And for the dimension reduction, as I mentioned, it's very popular for semantic structure analysis and also for data visualization, right? So like your input data, the dimension of your input X is like around the 
let's say, uh, 10,000. So it costs a lot. It's a huge computation cost for this, this kind of feature. So we can reduce it to just like uh, 10 dimension and the result is still acceptable, right? Uh, okay, the other field, uh, this one is, could be a little bit uh, complicated, this arrow, this branch is called reinforcement learning. Actually, this algorithm forward action according to the data point and the later assess the decision. So there are some techniques such as Q-learning, deep adversal network. So here the algorithm is applicable in the field of like, um, as, uh, as I gave in this figure, like game AI, the learning paths, the robot navigation and real time decision. In the next slide, I will give an example of what, what, what exactly the reinforcement learning is doing, right? I think most of you know that AlphaGo, right, is win the human expert uh, in which year, I can't remember, right, but it's just very recent. Uh, and deep learning is actually, um, it's task try to learn what action to take and given the certain situation. That means if you're playing the game, like the figure in the right hand side, our decision is we want to go left, right, and go forward, right, or backward. So this is action we want to take. So how to predict this kind of action? So here is uh, the figure is uh, um, we, we got the environment, the uh, like like let's say the screen in your computer, and uh, we got we got this image. And uh, we use this image as an input of the convolution and neutral network. So that means uh, what the game looks like will totally uh, be the input of the X, right? Of totally the input of the CN, right? That's after going through many, many convolution and layer, uh, the, actually the CN try to predict which action they want to take. So here is many, it's like 16 action here, right? Different like control, a different that direction of, of, of the game, right? Uh, so here is just a prediction, uh, like which action to be, uh, to, to be, it just looks like this action is a Y, right? Um, the interesting difference between this kind of surprise and the reinforcement learning that is that this reward signal simply tell you whether this action, uh, the agent, which action the agent take is good or bad. There is no classification score or ground truth classification like tell you which action you need to take. It's just tell you uh, what is the benefit for to win the, the, this, this game or, or not, right? So here I give the uh, simple structure of our uh, let's look at the figure in the left hand side. So, so the input as the input image will be be like your environment, right? So each time the agent will take the environment as a, this is a give the state of the agent, and the agent will take an action, will pick an action. So like we'll let's go forward or turn left. So each, this action will change the environment a little bit, right? And then the environment um, refresh its state and give a reward to the action, whether it's good or not. So this is a simple explanation of this RL. So actually there are many detailed techniques here, so I will not extend this part, yeah? Um, so here is uh, how, how much information do that different machine learning algorithm need to predict. So here, McQueen gave a figure of the guy with a kick, for example. He says that's like um, the reinforcement learning is it, just like the chat in this kick. So, so this is because the machine predict a scale reward given once in a while. So it's just, need a few bits of the same samples. And uh, the supervised learning is just like uh, this kind of thing in, the, in this cake. Uh, this is because the supervised machine learning 
predict the category of few numbers of this input. It predict human supply the data, like it just needs 10 to 10 10,000 bit per samples. And the other aspect is the unsupervised learning. The unsupervised learning is just looks this, like the whole cake of this machine learning, of this cake. And uh, this is because the unsupervised machine learning predict any part of the input of any observed data. So it's like it can predict the future frame in the video. So that needs millions of bits per samples. So someone will ask, I think before I just gave three main categories of machine learning algorithm, right? So someone may ask if there are any other field in this arrow. Oh, this obvious there are many techniques, many different machine learning algorithms beyond the three branch. So here I gave an example of semi-surprise learning. Uh, I have to say that semi-supervised learning is just like in the middle of surprise and unsurprised learning. That means for the training data, there's just part of the label uh, have the label Y, part of the image have the label Y. So they have some label data and they have lots of unlabeled data. So the method here is that's how to use the unlabeled data information. Right, it's not only like just use the label data to train a classifier. Yeah, you, you can get a prediction, right? A step low prediction. But this one did not use, uh, utilize the unlabeled data. So semi supervised learning is just try to use the data structure of unlabeled data. Let's say they can predict the pseudo label. That means not ground truth label from the human annotation, but they can predict a kind of Posito label and use this Posito label to accelerate the training process. So probably they can get better performance than just to supervise learning based on the limit label data. Okay. Um, another branch of this beyond the previous um, category I introduced. Another one is uh, transfer learning. Um, well, someone here, this is a figure to give some feeling of what is transfer learning. The figure on the left-hand side is the learning process of traditional machine learning. So just suppose we have different tasks. Let's say we want to recognize a horse, a Zumba, a cat, right? So traditional machine learning algorithm treats them as three separate tasks. Each one learn a model, got a learning system, and they are independent, right? And uh, but the learning process of transfer learning is try to utilize the knowledge from different tasks and benefit their target tasks. So here, the figure on the right hand side, they illustrate how transfer learning is doing. Right, so we have thought tasks. For example, uh, the thought task is right is try to recognize uh, cat and house, and uh, the knowledge actually the knowledge here is a benefit to try try to if the target task is try to recognize the Zumba, right? So the knowledge we we get from recognize the house actually can help with right to recognize the Zumba, right? So, so actually the transfer learning is try to transfer the knowledge that's op obtained from different tasks to the target task. Uh, so generally speaking, there are many definite, there are many field, subfield for the transfer learning. That depends if the label data available in the target domain or not available. If available, that's what we call it, it's a, uh, inductive transfer learning. And if no label in this source domain, that means we call it soft top learning. And if not, then this is a special case for the multi-task learning. And uh, here, because there's many subcategories, so here I only, only want to emphasize the two of them. One is multi-task learning, and the other is domain adaptation. So this one is quite, uh, popular and useful in, in machine learning if we try to use the machine learning algorithm in real case. 
Um, so here I gave the general structure of multitask learning. So that means um, how to get uh, how to get benefit if we learn a uh, different task together, right? For example, we have task A, task B, and task C, right? So the figure on the left hand side is uh, is a uh, is an algorithm. It's a kind of structure that's called hard parameter sharing. So so this is like um, this is the most commonly used approach for multitask learning. Uh, it's generally applied by sharing the hidden layer between the all tasks, while we keep the several specific tasks at the output layer. So that means if we go through a model, different tasks actually share some common layers. And they actually, different tasks have some task-specific knowledge, right? So we have designed the specific independent layer to predict the task-specific output, right? Uh, so this is a common structure. And on the right hand side is a, is a structure called the soft parameter sharing. Um, this is an advanced version uh, for the multitask learning. So in this case, uh, each task goes through different branch, right? But this branch actually they share some hyperparameters. There is actually some constraint or regulars of this. Right, so that means uh, uh, different layers in different tasks actually need to share some knowledge. But on the other hand, they can preserve some different things. So this is the main difference between the hard parameter sharing and soft parameter sharing structure for multitask learning. And the next one, uh, actually, um, I want to introduce uh, domain adaptation on their transfer learning scheme. Um, so what is the main, still this question, what is the main adaptation? Uh, this is, is a case that we, we want to train, uh, the, not train the model on the source data set, but test in a different data set. Uh, probably a little bit confusing for you, right? So give an example for this. We have very clean image net data set. It's a very big data set. And this image is, uh, is from Amazon or from, from any website, Fuka or something, right? Um, yeah, you have already got a very good classification model on the image now. But you know, in a real case, like here, we want to try to recognize it's a dog or cat or something. Uh, this is the real photo you had taken, right? So, so the environment of this is not similar to the image net structure, right? So because of your camera's uh, lighting and also the background. So here, let's say there is a very big domain gap from the source image net and the target. That means the, the photo you are taken, right? This is the environment you are make, taken, right? And another example of this is that uh, for automatic car driving. So that's for the car driving, actually we have many source data set for the daytime, for example. But I will target the domain is that we want to test it on the night or different city, right? Still, there is a big domain gap of this. So how to apply the knowledge that train a very large and clean source domain to the target domain in different environments? So this one is a very popular field in computation. Um, uh, probably a general, general algorithm here is we're using uh, game-based knowledge or using domain confusion laws for this. Is that like we try to minimize the domain uh, distribution difference. And then we apply the model. If the, if the model already apply, uh, very good on the source domain, and we try to align the target distribution, make it look like the source distribution, and then we can use this uh, the trained model, and got very good results on that. Right. So that that's uh, that's a main point for the domain adaptation. Uh, okay, so a little bit uh, 
review of the structure that's different category of machine learning. Actually, I introduced three main category is uh, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and the uh, reinforcement learning, right? In reinforcement learning, it's uh, very popular in like game AI, like for example, AlphaGo, right? They already be the human expert, right? Beyond this three main category, I introduced some specific te technique like uh, between surprise and semi surprise, there is uh, unsurprised, there is a semi surprise learning, right? That means it just get part of the label data is we got the label Y, right? Some we also have many, many unsurprised uh, label. Um, the other field is uh, transfer learning algorithm. I introduced the multi task learning and the domain adaptation technique here, right? So that's the different machine learning uh, theory and the category of this. So in the next phrase, I want to extend machine learning to the deep learning because the, there is a deep learning wave currently, right? So here, this is according to the Google Scholar, the Google trend for different uh, term of this. So before I already introduced the difference of deep learning, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, right? We can observe that actually uh, the orange line is deep learning. It's got more and more popular, even comparable to machine learning, right? And uh, but actually here, deep learning is just a subfield of machine learning, right? And also machine learning is a, sub a subfield of artificial intelligence, right? And uh, here, to demonstrate the uh, power of deep learning, here I gave a accuracy table of the image net. Uh, I already introduced image net include billions of image and got 1,000 categories, right? So here, let's see the performance on the image net. So actually, before the 2011, the accuracy is just below the 75, but in 2012, after AlexNet was introduced, deep learning based model get dramatic improvement on this field. It's got like more than 10 points, right? And after that, there are many, many other uh, CN based models were introduced. It is an endowed version compared with the previous the AlexNet structure. And uh, on ImageNet, you can see, right, it's already achieved 98, very close to 100%. Um, actually, I have to say that uh, actually 1,000 category renderation is very, it's very hard. Even humans just like 85% uh, accuracy, right? So from this figure, we know that's the powerful of deep learning algorithm. Uh, also here, I gave a figure to show what's the difference of machine learning and deep learning, right? So generous making deep learning or deep neutral network like the figure in the button, right? It's many, many nodes and edges. This is, uh, it's include many, many layers. And, but for the machine learning, uh, uh, it's actually, they cannot directly process the input. Uh, for example, the input in the image, right? For the traditional machine learning algorithm, it needs to extract handcraft features. This handcraft feature is designed by human. Uh, such like shift or hog feature is very popular before the deep learning algorithm got popular. And uh, this kind of feature needs human experts to design, right? And after they extract the hand feature, they put it to the, for example, uh, the standard N structure or the SVM and get an output. But the deep learning simplifies this process. They do not need the human to extract have quite feature. It's just what the input is. It just gives the real feature to the deep learning. Uh, we, we do not need the uh, specific um, expert or do not need to understand this image or input. We just put it to the uh, structure, deep learning structure, and we predict the output. So it's a very simplified version of this. And let, let's go into the detail of, well, what's the difference between the N structure deep learning neutral network, right? 
before the deep learn learning, actually an structure has already in, in, introduced like in 1950s, right? So before that, it's a very simple neural network structure. It's just like three layers or two layers, right? But after the deep learning uh, technique was introduced, actually we have more and more layers, just like this figure, right? We have more and more hidden layers, right? Um, like for example, XNet is just seven layer, um, but it includes many trick and uh, special design for XNet. And currently, actually, we already have some uh, like ResNet 50, ResNet 101, right? Um, so we have currently we have more and more uh, layers for the deep learning. Um, here, I just want to illustrate uh, actually each layer was the feature it's extracted from the same structure, right? So here I give an example. Like for the first layer, it's just abstract, very, um, let's say, fundamental pattern, like the shape and the line, right? But gradually, we got more and more rich information, and we can recognize it's the eye, it's a nose, or it's a mouse, right? And gradually, if we go to check the, the high level of the same structure, like in layer three, what pattern we capture is actually we capture different phase structure, right? Different phase. And then we finally recognize uh, it's the same person or not. So here I just gave a simple illustration uh, for what pattern is extract is captured by the deep neutral network. Otherwise, this deep this is same structure. Uh, another thing I want to mention is that um, before I already introduced, like AlexNet has got uh, very good accuracy, right? Uh, here, um, this is also involved AlexNet. AlexNet uh, 2012, uh, it's got uh, 60.4 error, top five error rate. Uh, it's just include eight layer for this. And after that, um, for example, in the uh, 2014, that's 20 layer or designed and introduced by the Google Net. And uh, gradually, we, how many layer we have? The rest net got 152 layers and the performance got dramatic increase. The error is rated just 3.5. Yeah, so we know that the more layers, the more uh, layers we have, just simple speaking, the more layers we have, actually the more powerful for the signal and structure. Yeah. Uh, so here is, uh, if you have interest uh, for the computer vision task and the, the signal structure here, I just gave a very uh, simple um, illustration of different uh, structure what it looks like. Uh, here is the AlexNet, VGG, GoogleNet, and the ResNet. So the ResNet actually have the rest block for this. So it's very uh, interesting and elegant design for this. Now, if you have further interest, uh, you can have a look and check for the courses. Um, there is an introduction to machine learning and also introduction to computation. And finally, it's uh, some I want to introduce and some popular deep learning free work. Uh, at the moment, actually, TensorFlow that's introduced by Google seems to be the most used deep learning free work. And this is based on the GitHub stars and folks. And uh, some other uh, frameworks that I want to mention uh, before the uh, TensorFlow. Actually, Cafe is the most popular in the research field, but now it's a little bit old fashioned. And the other platform I want to mention is PyTorch. So currently, I think most uh, research students mostly focus on the PyTorch, 
because it's uh, easy to use than the TensorFlow and got quicker updates, right? But TensorFlow for the industry is still very, very popular and stable, right? So here I just briefly introduced, I got an extension for from the machine learning to the deep learning, right? So I think it just have a simple taste of what is the deep learning algorithm, right? So yeah, so it goes through this one. So I just, uh, uh, today's lecture, I just briefly introduce the different terms, the artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. I guess specific, um, Introduce introduce of different category of machine learning, supervised, unsupervised, and uh, reinforcement learning and transfer learning, semi-supervised learning, right? And also I introduce a little bit for the deep learning algorithm, including scene and structure, right? And also a very take-home message is that you can, if you have some, if you're interested in this work, you can have a look for the TensorFlow or PyTorch tutorial. It's very easy to run some code on it. If you want to like run uh, the um, digital recognition, I think it's just five or six lines of this. You can directly run on your computer, right? So yeah, thank you so much for attending this, uh, this course.